technology is the most meaningful when it can help us get things done. Joining us to discuss the art of productivity is productivity expert David Allen. Hey, David. Hi, Charlene. It is truly an honor and a pleasure to have you here, and I'll tell you why. Not only do I have GTD, or getting things done, I make everybody who comes to work at my company read it before they sit down at their desk the first time. It's a <laughs> prerequisite for actually getting here. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks for buying my book and <laughs> spreading the word. I appreciate it. So I have a bone to pick while I've got you here. It seems to me that your book has been softwareized by people who don't realize that your method is incredibly simple with a pen and a paper, but when you start adding layers of computerness to it, you actually spend as much time doing the computery part as you do getting things done. So I don't blame you, but I blame you. Yes. Well, productivity <laughs> porn, come on. You know, <laughs> there, there are worse ways to, to waste your time. You know, you might as well explore software and, you know, feature creep. I you'll, guess. You're dead, you know. I guess. Tell everybody what the basis of GTD is. Get it out of your head. Decide sooner than later what outcomes you're committed to, what the action step is you need to take. Organize that in some coherent way so that you can step back and look at the whole thing on a regular basis, keep it current, and then feel good about your choices about what you do. Now, there's a whole part of the book that talks about the psychology of getting your to-do list out of your head and into something you can trust. Is that the essence or is there... That's a big part of it. You know, a lot of the paradigm shift is truly to stop using your psyche as your system because it's not designed for that. It's designed for having ideas but not for holding them. It's also not designed to, to hold all of the potentially meaningful things and to be able to man manage context. So you've got to get it out of your head. I mean, everybody you know, watching, listening to this, at some points felt overwhelmed and confused and sat down and made a list and felt at least a little bit better. Right. And nothing changed except how they were engaged with their world. Well, if you reverse engineered that, figured out why that happened, you'd never keep anything in your head the rest of your life. So I don't. <laughs> okay. I get it. Um, what's the... I am obviously an idea person, and I've, uh, the only defense I have in the whole world is actually adopting a productivity system, and yours seems to be the best. What's your advice for people who are just filled with ideas, they just, and they just, they're brimming with ideas, and they've got lists everywhere, and little pieces of paper everywhere, and wh what do you got for them? Well, if they've got it on little pieces of paper, that's a first step. But a second step is really to be able to es essentially aggregate all of those things into some meaningful form so that you can sit down and engage with them meaningfully. So it's not a bad idea, and, and there's a lot of digital tools out there. I use mind mapping and I use personal brain. There are a lot of different kinds of things you could use as placeholders for ideas. And I think how you then structure them and what you do with them is going to be a very personal call. Uh, but that's you know using your tools to sit down and say, okay, what really do I want to focus on? How do I want to be creative right now? You need to focus, and then it'll help you. It'll, it'll help you. So you know, there are plenty of digital tools. Uh, daylight. OmniFocus, all the stuff from 37 Signals, there are plenty of great digital tools. But sometimes when you're done putting all the stuff into your digital tools, you feel like you've done a lot of work. And yet all you've really done is got everything in a place where now you have to go find it. Well, yeah, but actually, if you're actually really doing it with real stuff, you're not just reorganizing data. You really are doing thinking while you're doing it. Because my process is really about an installed thought process. What do I need to think about this email? What do I need to think about this note about my mom? And by simply putting it into a system, you're not just rearranging things, you're actually thinking, wait a minute, what does that mean to me? Where does that go? How does that relate to the other things that I have? So there actually is a very powerful process of getting this stuff out of your head and arranging it appropriately. Now, you can use organization as a way to avoid your life like anything else. You know, too controlled is out of control because you don't have the flexibility, you don't have it current, and it's, it, is, it does become too much trouble. That's why it's got to be very simple, very fast, and you've got to keep it current. Otherwise, you won't trust it. We are going to continue this right after the break. I'm Shelley Palmer. You're watching Live Digital.